So um, I'm going to talk about care managers' perspectives on the new national eligibility regulations for adult social care in England. Um, and um, that was a project conducted um, for the Department of Health um, and PSSRU by myself, Jose Luis Fernandez and Tom Schnell. And I'm just going to talk about a small part of of that and um, the qualitative findings, but um, I'm just going to give you um, a brief um, background to the study, especially for those of you who are not familiar with the British system. Uh, so local authorities in England since 2003 use for access to care um, services guidance to determine eligibility. Um, and based on, the, um, on that, local authorities assess the needs as critical, substantial, moderate or low, uh, but they retain autonomy to determine the minimum level of needs at which individuals are eligible for support, and that's in majority of local authorities, it's substantial. However, as part of the social care reforms, um, the FACTS framework will be replaced by national minimum eligibility criteria from April 2015. Um, and the reason for that is to improve the transparency around um, entitlement to support and to improve it for practitioners but also for, uh, for users. Obviously to establish a common, common minimum level of eligible needs across all local authorities and also to make it easier for people to move um, across different local authorities. Um, however, at the same time, the goal is to allow local authorities to maintain their existing levels of access to care and support. Um, <coughs> um, so in terms of the, oops, in terms of the draft eligibility cr um, criteria, the first version was actually tested last June um, and there was also a survey conducted uh, based on um, case studies. Um, there were some workshops that um, DH engaged with voluntary sector and aiders and the feedback that they received was that um, the new regulations were easy to understand relative to facts. However, based on, new, um, on the feedback, um, um, the feedback was that um, the new regulations are likely to increase the numbers of eligible people. There were some requests to define certain phrases. And also, there were some requests to develop more outcomes-focused regulations. So, consequently, there was a, se a second uh, version of the draft um, uh, regulations developed, which was tested in June, July this year. Um, so, um, just to give you um, an idea of the, the regulations, especially for those of you who, again, not familiar um, with the regulations in England, um, and uh, the, the draft regulations that um, were tested, we had three versions of them. Two, uh, one of them was activities focused, and two of them were outcomes focused. Um, and I'm just going <coughs> to show you these if I may. Uh, right, so basically across all three versions um, of the regulations, um, first of all, an adult's needs meet the eligibility criteria if the adult's needs are caused by a physical or mental impairment or illness. And as a result of the adult's needs, the adult is unable to achieve an outcome specified in paragraph two. And the outcomes were, and that's where the differences start, in the activities-based regulations, the first outcome was um, carrying out some or all basic care activities. And the care activities were, for example, eating and drinking, maintaining personal hygiene, toileting, getting up and dressed, getting around one's home, preparing meals, um, and the cleaning and maintenance of one's home. 
And then there were other outcomes as well, which was maintaining family or other significant personal relationships, as, um, accessing and engaging in work training, education, or volunteering, accessing necess necessary facilities or services in the local community, um, including medical services, public transport, educational facilities, recreational facilities or services, and carrying out um, um, any caring responsibilities the adult has for a child. So that was the activities versions. The, um, the outcomes versions, uh, well, first of all, uh, the first specified outcomes was meeting one or more basic care outcomes in one version or meeting some or more. So these were the differences. So it was either one or more or some or, um, or more. And in terms of the um, basic care out outcomes, uh, the language used was obviously different. So the outcomes were managing and maintaining nutrition rather than eating and drinking. Uh, maintaining personal hygiene, managing toilet needs, being appropriately clothed, uh, being able to make use of the home safely and keeping one's home adequately clean and maintained. Um, and also what was new in the, um, in the, um, the, the draft regulations is that actually um, carers um, will be eligible for assessment and can be eligible for um, state support. Uh, so there was a whole section with regards to carers. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to talk in details about them. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the presentations. Uh, so basically, these were the, the three versions and the differences between them. Oops, again. Uh, so, it was a mixed study. There was a quantitative part, which was a survey um, conducted in 27 local authorities, um, and that covered the four main social care client groups and carers. Um, and the survey gathered information about the needs related factors of the individuals assessed for social care support. Um, and also the outcome of assessment process eligibility and the support packages. And the care managers applied the draft uh, eligibility criteria to people that they had um, recently assessed. So rather uh, than a year ago when uh, the eligibility criteria were tested, that was a vignette, so it was case study. This time they uh, applied them to, um, to people they've um, recently assessed using facts, obviously. And also, um, um, both professionals from the first point of contact and those carrying out full assessment um, were involved in both the survey and also in the focus groups. And again, for those of you who are not familiar with the system, um, in England, um, in uh, many local authorities, not in all, um, usually when a person uh, approaches local authority, they go through a first a point of contact, somebody who screens that person whether they um, are likely to be eligible and whether they, um, they will be passed on for full assessment or not. So we involved those individuals from the first point of contact but also those doing the full assessment. Right, so we um, also did six focus groups. Um, which were carried out in the subsample of participating local authorities. Um, there were three to nine participants in each of the focus groups and they lasted between one, um, one hour and an hour and a half. Uh, obviously the discussions were audio recorded, transcribed, we used a legal term to analyze the data and also thematic analysis to, um, to organize the data um, and focus yeah, um, on reporting patterns and themes. So, well, the objective of the focus groups was to, um, we asked participants to, to give feedback on the content of the draft uh, regulations, obviously, relative to facts. And we wanted also to examine care managers' views about the potential consequences of new regulations on the existing level of access to care and support, the likely cost of reforms, impact on local authorities, but also um, their views about the implications of the new regulations for assessment process. 
So in terms of feedback we received, um, well, as, as a year ago, the feedback was that the new regulations are clear and easy to understand relative to facts. However, despite of that, uh, it was pointed out by um, care managers that, um, for example, the phrase significant impact on well-being um, is vague. Um, and what I did forget to mention at the beginning is that um, in order to be eligible, um, the, um, if somebody has needs, um, it has to have a significant impact on somebody's well-being. That was the language. So care managers pointed out, well, it's not very clear what significant impact on well-being means. Um, not all of them, obviously. Uh, but some of them thought that um, it was open to interpretation, um, particularly in the context of personalization, where it's up to the client to define um, what it means. And just to give you some quotes, uh, one care manager said, when you bring in personalization into it, how do you define somebody's well-being? You cannot define it as practitioner. They will define it. If they say, this has a significant impact on my well-being, I need that piece of equipment. Another care manager said, what's significant to one person might not be to another. They might think something um, is really significantly impacting on the life, but we might see it while it ain't really. However, having said that, obviously, uh, um, it's more complicated. So some care managers reported that um, significant impact on well-being is um, very similar, equiv equivalent to the definition of, of substantial need in facts. Uh, the local authorities, again, in, in England, they have their own guidance on how they interpret facts. So they might be different in different local authorities, so that might be the reason. Um, and again, in terms of the increase in the numbers of eligible uh, people, um, most care managers and, 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 and most uh, local authorities we talked to um, we did uh, focus groups, thought that the new regulations will increase the existing level of um, access to care and support. Um, and that's because some thought that that was caused by the uncertainties and in interpretation of certain phrases, like the significant well-being. Um, and also, some care managers thought that was because there was no clear cut-off point, um, you know, whereas the are the people that are not eligible, are the people who are eligible relative to the facts. Um, and just to give you a quote, um, one care manager said, how would you justify that somebody is not eligible? Because now we only provide service if there is critical or substantial, but there is nothing here to say, uh, to justify. And another one replied, that's not defensible because it's not clear where the cutoff point is. Um, but some and I just thought that the inclusion of, for example, household maintenance um, um, in the uh, new or draft eligibility criteria in, will increase the numbers. Uh, but also, obviously, the inclusion of, uh, of carers, regardless of whether the person they're caring for is eligible or not. Um, so they thought that would increase the numbers of um, eligible people overall. In terms of financial implications, well, obviously, increase in numbers of eligible people. Um, there were anxieties that that would lead to um, increased need for financial resources, and especially where the financial pressure was already high or reported or, um, as, as being high, there was greater anxiety, and that was related to the fact that in, in, in those local authorities, um, care managers um, perceived the new regulations as a maybe threat and they, that, that related to express the disadvantages of the new um, regulations. And again, a quote uh, from one of the care managers, how are we gonna meet the cost? If you look at our local authority, if you look at the demographics, how many people will be eligible? How many carers we have got? I don't know how the budget will be divided to support these increased numbers. Uh, so we're, there were concerns, obviously, like that. Uh, but again, the picture is not um, kind of um, uniform. And in two, um, 
two LAs that um, we did focus groups in, um, their feedback was that the new regulations are unlikely to impact uh, the budget significant, significantly, although one of them said that while well, explicit CARES assessment may increase financial needs, but they, uh, the care managers were quite um, optimistic that potentially eligible carers may be signposted to non-statutory services. So, um, mixed picture there. Um, so, in terms of the groups of users that care managers thought they were missing, or dimensions of needs they were missing from the new regulations, it was pointed out, for example, that the requirement that some or more basic care outcomes or activities need to be fulfilled to may exclude individuals who actually have difficulties with one dimension of need, but that could still have a severe impact on their um, well-being. Um, and again, a quote uh, from one local authority. Um, if you cannot manage nutrition, even if it is only one thing, it will have a big impact on your well-being. Another care manager replied to that. If you cannot cope with dusting your house, it may distress you a little bit, but you will not die from that. If you cannot get your food, that's a different story. Um, and, and there were other concerns as well, for example, that the fact that needs have to stem from physical, mental impairment or illness, um, there were concerns that that could exclude, for example, people with autism um, or substance misuses. Um, and again, it was pointed out that um, uh, such dimensions of needs as managing finances, bills, correspondence what was missing or not very clear, uh, which could impact, um, for example, older people in particular who are uh, vulnerable to financial abuse and might need help with, for example, managing finances. Um, or with people with brain injuries who might have a um, problem with correspondence, even if that's only one dimension of need. Um, it was also pointed out that um, the phrasing access to public transport uh, may exclude individuals who actually need non-public transport, especially people with uh, mental health problems, that was pointed out to me, uh, that might not, um, might, not need, need, uh, might not feel comfortable using public transport. Um, and also in terms of other feedback, uh, there were questions whether some of the dimensions of need should be actually adult social care responsibility. Uh, for example, it was pointed out that NHS actually should be responsible for making their services more accessible, not um, adult social care, or whether engaging in work training, education, volunteering should be adult social care responsibility. That was also questions. And for example, uh, one care manager um, pointed out that, so if all the agencies are reading this, now they will think, well, adult social care uh, can do this, and that's our responsibility now. Um, consequently, there were also um, um, some um, comments that the new regulations actually should um, clarify the extent of collaboration between agencies to actually meet identified needs and also that maybe it should be made more clear in their regulations uh, for clients actually that needs may be met by other services uh, not only by, by other social care and also by informal carers and again uh, another quote from a care manager if we truly integrate with health if we say we identify needs, but within these, it should say that um, that's how we work with other agencies. It doesn't say in the new regulations that um, you are eligible if other services are not available because we do use the voluntary sector and we encourage them, um, clients, to use informal care. It should be more detailed um, so that when, they, when clients or people turn around, you can say you may be assessed for these, but this need can be met in many different ways. But again, I need to highlight that, that these um, opinions were related to respondents' concerns over budgetary pressures. Uh, so where no budgetary pressures were reported, um, care managers were more relaxed about uh, these points. Um, 
And again, in, in terms of feedback we received about outcomes versus activities, um, kind of mixed feedback, I would say. Some managers re um, uh, reported that um, outcomes-based regulations are more person-centered um, and allow practitioners to consider a um, wider variety of needs compared to activities. And again, to give you a quote, um, one care manager pointed out, someone may be able to get up and get dressed, but it may be middle of the winter and they may put on a vest top, whereas the outcome says being appropriately clothed and there is a world of difference between the two. And being able to use the home safely and getting around the house, somebody can get around the house, but it could be a nightmare <coughs> for them and the risk may be high, for example, accessing the kitchen, uh, what they are like on the stairs. So, again, consequently, it was reported the activities-based regulations could actually um, exclude people um, who are able to perform activity but cannot achieve an outcome. Uh, for example, people with dementia, um, learning uh, disabilities. And even care managers who supported the uh, outcomes or thought they were better than activities uh, highlighted that subjectivity of such words as adequately or, pro or pr appropriately clothed could be still um, an issue. Uh, and that the outcomes-based regulations may actually lead to enforcement of appropriate standards, whatever appropriate is, um, and they might put pressure on users to perform an outcome. Um, so, again, the activities, therefore, were thought by some care managers to be more objective, more straightforward to apply, easy for users to understand as well. Um, and some care managers thought that activities were actually easier to measure than outcomes and therefore, based on activities, would be, it would be easier to provide evidence for eligibility. Um, in terms of um, risk of legal challenge um, with regards to new regulations, um, well, the feedback we received is that the new regulations allow sufficient flexibility to exercise professional judgment, where um, some care managers thought there was actually too much um, flexibility, and maybe they were concerned that um, there wasn't enough transparency, um, which could lead to more legal challenges for um, local authorities. And to give you a quote, uh, one care manager said, with their wording, if we're trying to argue that it does not have a significant impact, you have people saying that it has such a catastrophic impact on somebody's life, whereas to us it may be a moderate need, but we don't have that backup now in legislation, she meant now, I mean with the new regulations. Um, however, again, uh, the um, uh, the, the story is that in the, um, in the local authorities where no immediate threat to the budget was perceived, actually the care managers said that the new regulations um, are even less likely to uh, lead to legal challenge. Um, and that's because the new regulations were believed to be more um, person-centered, etc. So for example, uh, one care manager said, that I would say there would be less legal risk because this is less, these new regulations are less rigid than current fax criteria. In another local um, authority, care manager said, if some families thought they were being listened to and given a care package that they want as an outcome, and I don't think they would legally challenge it as much. So, very different opinions. Um, and in terms of carers, um, the feedback we received was that, well, um, the car managers overall were happy to see uh, carers included in the new regulations. But again, uh, the story was that there were concerns that um, that will lead to increase in um, eligible people. Um, there are some concerns that was not very clear what the current um, is. Um, 
And that's important when there are multiple carers for an individual uh, because there, there are concerns who's going to get the support, everybody, etc. And also, there are totally different opinions sometimes where the um, only carers, if people who are eligible, <coughs> should be eligible or not. Um, and I'll just give you two quotes um, which kind of highlight that. And one local authority, Kaman just said, if individuals' needs do not meet criteria, but the carer is pulling the hair out because they are making sure that these individuals' needs are met, then it would be good for the carer to have money attached to meet the needs, but it will cost. Um, in another local authority, um, the opinion was um, the opposite, actually. Um, so one care manager said, service user does not have to have their own eligible needs for the carer to meet the cr these criteria. That's going to be an increase. And another one said maybe it should say that the person has to have eligible needs because that closes it, it down somehow. But it, then again, it, it depended whether people were, or the care managers were concerned about the increase and the financial pressures or not. Um, I mean, just to kind of um, sum up what I've said, so the, the conclusions or the, um, the feedback we received was that there could be more people um, in the system uh, based on new regulations. There were anxieties about the need for further financial resources, especially in the current climate of austerity, obviously. Um, and particularly in local authorities where the financial pressures were reported as already being high. There were some uh, uh, concerns about the language, um, the threshold. Um, outcomes were often perceived as um, encompassing more needs uh, relative to activities, however more subjective. Um, inclusion of carers was perceived as good, but again, concerns over financial resources. So that's it. Thank you very much.